At one level, the law is nothing but a few rules written down on a scrap of paper. The question is, why should some ink spilt on paper change behavior? All this power is nothing but ordinary people's beliefs of, about one another. That is what gives the ruler the power. What I believe the policeman will do and the police person's belief about what the magistrate might do to the police and the world is a lock-in of beliefs. Hence the title, The Republic of Beliefs. And my book is a reconstruction of that using modern game theory. Imagine a grid and the game is very simple. Two individuals are told, choose a square each. If you choose the same square, you'll get $100. If you choose different squares, you get nothing. If you make people play this game, and I've done it, they'll be all over the place. Now let me change something which is innocuous. Just that I've painted one square, an inky blue. The rules are the same. Choose the same square, $100, different squares, nothing. Virtually everyone will choose the square that is marked ink because that helps you to build up expectations of what the other person will do. You know the other person is likely to choose that, and so you will choose this, and likewise the other person's expectation of you, and you manage to coordinate. Though abstract this may look, the law is nothing else. The ink with which you write down some words in the law is like the ink on that square, which helps people build up expectations of one another's behavior. In India, there's a big program to distribute food below market price to poor households. This goes wrong very often. We have data that about 40% of the food collected by the state for this leaks out into the system. What goes wrong is that the functionaries of the state behave not like robotic creatures who do what they are supposed to do, but like ordinary human beings who are also trying to make some money and profit. We needed to amend our framework of analysis, and a large part of the book is concerned with that problem.